Hello everyone and welcome back to another readathon. We're gonna spend, or mostly me, uh, reading for the next uh, three days. The uh, program is gonna be to finish the Under an Ember Sky by Rose Alexander. Contemporary one set in uh, Montenegro. I'm gonna talk about it slightly more further in the meantime. Ready to go into my reading. I have my uh, reading glasses. I have my uh, Kindle. And uh, let me tell you what is going on so far with an ember sky under an ember sky. Sophie is recently a widow. Her husband has suddenly died of a heart attack, if I remember right. And uh, obviously, as um, any um, uh, surprising death, uh, she's uh, totally devastated. She's gonna go at the end of the summer with her best friend uh, Anna and uh, her son in uh, Montenegro for some getaway vacation. She's buying a house, very old one, which is in desperate need of more than repair. Okay. I think six different love letters, if you want, that she found uh, written by um, probably one of the uh, cat hair, sorry, uh, one of the previous owners of uh, the house in uh, 1942. And uh, she's gonna discover following that uh, those letters that the wife is writing to her husband who has been um, captured by the Italian uh, who occupied Montenegro at that time uh, during the war and he has been sent into kind of a, a concentration camp if you want an island and uh, she's gonna discover what's happened to uh, that man. It's always interesting to discover um, the past and even if it's a, a dark past it's it's a past worth to be to be remembered so i'm gonna try to read not to be too much distracted by my uh, panther running around this is a way later it is the night and i think we are almost uh, close to uh, 10 uh, p.m so since I am uh, filming with my phone and he desperately need to charge its battery, that's why this is uh, this kind of a awkward uh, filming uh, position situation. I left with 53% uh, of Under an Ember Sky by Rose Alexander and right now I can tell you that we are at or I am at 82%, uh, so we are close to the end. I am excited. I have my teas already uh, in the cups, ready to be drunk alongside of a reading. So I am back and I finished uh, Under an Ember Sky by Rose Alexander. Right now, I would give it more 3.5 stars. She's slowly gonna... Uh, make her own family. My panther is a climber. Oh man! And um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> is she uh, trying to uh, explore and uh, to do right now? I'm going to have to pick up my tulips. For me, the, the strongest thing will be uh, first uh, the history giving us onto uh, Montenegro, uh, what happened, um, not a lot, but what happened during uh, the Second World War. So it was a nice reading. Um, and uh, I can concur that this is very similar to uh, the story of the movie uh, Under a Tuscan Sun. I didn't read the book, 
I am pretty satisfied with the movie, which I really do love. So for the next readings, it's uh, very late, it's uh, uh, almost midnight. I probably won't come back uh, tonight, it's gonna be tomorrow, Saturday. Hi everyone, this is the second day of the Redditon, so we are Saturday morning. I have a few little bit of time before uh, leaving for work. I finished last night, uh, late light, last night. Under an Ember Sky by Rose Alexander. I decided to keep uh, to keep trying with um, Drop of Night by uh, Stephen Beckman. This is a book that I started to read in uh, September. The story is really good, but it triggered some uh, extremely high phobia for me, um, fear of uh, confinement, claustrophobic, and uh, at that time, I was in a high peak of uh, anxiety attack level, and I didn't have any medication yet. So when I read the book, I read uh, half of it at that time. It was excruciating for me. I sadly had to put it aside because it was interesting and gripping, but too much for me to read. So I decided last night, <coughs> Sorry. Since now I uh, start to feel better and uh, I have my medication that I can try to see if I am capable of keep reading it. I read uh, three chapters. This is way more uh, later Saturday. I think we are close to 11 p.m. It's been uh, it has been uh, a day of work. Last day of the week. Ooh, it's done and uh, I have uh, tried to do some uh, reading of uh, A Drop of Night by uh, Stephen uh, Backman. If I don't see you again, uh, definitely see you tomorrow. And this is a Sunday 24. I can say so far since uh, I did some reading last night, I did some reading this morning. It was or it is still a crappy day outside. I am uh, almost uh, almost done. I have uh, maybe 120 pages left. We are following a group of uh, I think a handful of teenagers, uh, all Americans, different backgrounds, uh, different knowledge or uh, they have different kind of uh, strength. The legends are that uh, um, the second palace has been built during the time of the French Revolution in uh, 1789, or obviously slightly before, uh, since you have to be finished uh, at the, by the time of the French Revolution. And uh, nobody never really saw that uh, palace built way deep down under the surface, and it's supposed to be marvelous, full of richness. Apparently that group, that corporation, found that palace and uh, so they are invited those handful of teenagers to go there with an archaeologist and within the few short hours that they arrived uh, at the surface palace, they realized that there's something kind of wrong. They are drugged they walk up what they are assuming and it will be uh, underneath in that um, myth but hidden palace. They just know that um, almost all the rooms are full of traps to kill anyone who can be inside. So it became quickly a matter of death of life and they are um, trying to move around to find a way to get out. You still don't know what is the connection between all of them and the palace because we they are not, as so I have to say that we are, they are not convinced that this is just random. I'm curious, I'm dying to know what this is all about. And I, hope I am uh, back with uh, probably the end of uh, the read a -ton. Uh, Let me See, yes, it's uh, 5.28. Um, I'm gonna say that, you know what, with the readathon itself, by speeding uh, the reading, I am done. And I am done. Hold on. 
as again. <laughs> Uh, Reading a Drop of Night by uh, Stephen Beckman. One of the good thing is that you can read it really uh, fast. I don't have a very good uh, opinion. It's not much, not much stars at all. I would say that for me the main flaws, if it's not the only flaws, would be the story itself. The author had an idea of what he wanted, uh, and I'm assuming um, he had an idea of what he wanted to put in the story, and this is mainly the uh, the dramatic effect of uh, killing trapped um, underground, deep underground, that you can't escape. When you have the whole picture of the thing, it's really like, oh man, there are so much stuff that could have been prevented. And it's not that prevented like bad decision, it's just doesn't make sense and the only way that it doesn't make sense it's because this is what uh, the author wanted it to happen. It is a waste of story I would say. Um, again it's always my opinion. Love. I finished Under an Ember Sky by Rose Alexander at the beginning of this read a ton. Uh, a contemporary one. It was lovely but at the same time it was stretching too long with the story. Oh, yes, I decided that it was time to finish A Drop of Night by Stephen Bachman that I just showed you at the beginning. So I did quite some reading because I was lucky that it was fast to read. Thank you very much for watching this uh, vlogging read a ton and uh, I will see you next time in March for another one.